Time, one of the most valuable commodities in life. I've gotten to the field hundreds of times as the sun sets after a long day of school or team training, leaving me just 30 or 40 minutes to improve my weaknesses before it gets dark. And this isn't much time, but I'll give you two different training plans to use that'll help you master the key fundamentals to football in just 30 minutes. What's that? Uh-huh. Why even bother? I know 30 minutes isn't much time, and you probably just want to head home and have some soup instead, but this time is important. Let's say your teammate, Little Timmy, does team training four times a week, plays on the weekend, and does an additional individual session on one of his off days to work on his technical ability. This puts him at about nine hours of training per week, which is not bad at all. It is decent. You, on the other hand, watch the rest of this video and decide you're gonna do an additional 30 minutes of technical training four days a week. This means you have two more hours of training a week and over the course of a whole year, that's 104 more hours of training than little Jimmy over there. This is how you get the edge. You have to train harder and better than your competition if you wanna make the better teams or get more playing time at your current club. But since you only have 30 minutes to work out, you need to get the best bang for your buck, or in this case, time. So I sat down and planned. To get the most out of your time, I first decided what are the most important skills that each player needs to master to reach the highest level. The first skill that popped up in my head is the focus of the first 10 minutes of the 30. And you guessed it, it's all about improving your passing ability. And for this section, pick one of these two drills. The first option here is to do some wall passing. This is perfect for improving your short passing ability. When doing this drill, aim for the same spot on the wall to pass to. You can do this by creating a gate for you to pass the ball into every time, or in this case, I use the logo as my target point on this rebounder. Spend two and a half minutes using only your right foot before switching to just your left foot. Then switch to doing two touch passing for another two and a half minutes focusing on having a soft first touch. And finally, work on your favorite turns by receiving the ball on the turn every few passes and quickly bursting around a cone that is about three to five yards away. That way, you're building the habit of being explosive on the turn, hopefully getting yourself away from pressure as opposed to turning into it. The other option for this section is to do Ronaldinho dribbling to passing into one of the gates for the entire 10 minutes. This is primarily an alternative for players who don't have access to a wall or don't have a rebounder like the one I'm using here. If you're interested in getting one, I put a link to the one I use in the description below. I got it a couple months ago, I love it, and I use it all the time. So yeah, I highly recommend it. Also, I receive a percentage of any purchases made through this link, so thank you in advance. The main benefit of doing this drill instead is that you're improving your footwork, coordination, and dribbling ability in tight spaces while you're also improving your passing. It's a fantastic drill, but you won't be able to get as many repetitions as you can when you're passing up against the wall. With passing off the list, we can realistically focus on improving two or more skills in the 20 minutes we have left. And I don't know if it was just me, but growing up, I was consistently told by my coaches that I need to improve my first touch. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And I have another two drills for you to pick from for this section. The first option you have is wall juggling. This is one of the best drills out there for improving your first touch and ball control. For some of you, this may be too challenging. And if that's the case, I highly, highly recommend you improve your juggling ability. While juggling isn't a very useful skill in games, being able to juggle well allows you to do drills like this which will do wonders for your first touch. And if you need some advice or guidance to improve your juggling ability, then watch this video after this one. I'll link it in the description for you. Spend five minutes doing two touch juggling with your laces only, and then spend the other five minutes using just the inside of your feet. Now, if you don't have access to a wall like this, then do this drill instead. Have you ever had somebody at practice kick the ball high up in the air saying, how's your touch? just to see if you can control the ball with your first touch? This drill is literally that. 
juggle the ball up for a few juggles, and then hit the ball up in the air before controlling it however you want. You can focus on using the inside of your foot, your laces, keeping the ball up by juggling with your touch, or even taking your touch into space. There's a lot of freedom to this drill, so mix it up and make sure that you're improving using both feet. I also recommend not hitting the ball up as high as you can when you first start doing this drill. Instead, start off at a comfortable height, and as you find more and more success, challenge yourself by hitting it higher. This is a great alternative to the wall juggling drill too, because you don't need to be as good of a juggler, and if you can't juggle at all, then you can just throw the ball up in the air instead. Also, you may have noticed that the scenery has changed several times throughout the video, and it's not because you can't do it all in one session or location. I'm aware that some of you won't have access to a full field of space like this or have a wall to do juggling against, and that's why I have a couple of options for each section. Whether you have to do this in your garage or backyard, or instead you have a field and tons of space but no wall to use, there should be something for everyone here. Make the most of what you have, and we're going to do just that in this last section where we improve our dribbling ability. Option one is for you all that have tons of space. This drill is the alternating gated sprint dribble. For this drill, set up six gates, each four yards apart from the last, and stagger them left or right of each other. Dribble through the gates using one foot down and back. Just make sure that you switch feet for each rep so that way you're improving your dribbling with both feet. Also, this drill has a lot of versatility. This variation is a little tighter and more congested to help you dribble in tighter spaces. If you'd rather work on your dribbling at top speed, stretch the gates farther apart from one another so you don't have to cut as sharply and can really get up to full sprint with the ball. Now if you don't have space for this, or are wanting something different, then do this instead. Set up a square with each cone 5 or 6 yards apart if you have space for that, and start dribbling in an hourglass, dribbling just using your right foot. After 40 seconds, rest for 20 seconds, and switch to using just your left foot. Do both of these twice, and then go through two more times using both feet. Both feet. Just wanted to say that again, in case somebody missed that the first time. Finally, dribble in and around the square however you'd like for two rounds, maybe working on some skill moves or turns too. Now if you've gotten this far into the video, watch this one next. In it, I give you five steps to be able to improve at anything just by creating an excellent training plan. Thanks for watching.